Well, look at this beautiful, beautiful day. Kind of clouded over. Wonderful temperatures. But summertime is coming, and so is the heat. So let's get into that today. Well, hello again, Internet. Welcome back to the channel. Yeah, today we decided to bring out the fat tire bike. It's a nice cool day here in uh, May in North Carolina. Clouded over. We had a little bit of rain a little bit ago. But uh, that doesn't mean it's going to stay this way. That's right. The heat's going to be on its way. And are you going to be ready for it? Are you going to be ready to go riding when it gets here? Well, I've been thinking about that lately and what you would do to get that way. Hey, old bald face. How you doing? Old bald face pony up there. Uh, and I'm going to want to hear some things from you guys. I kind of went through and made myself a little list of, of different things that I think would be pretty important. And I think right on top of that list, now let me let me tell you right off the bat, the area we live, we pretty much ride throughout the year. Oh, we might miss a weekend. I may not get many chances to go through the week when it gets dark real early, because it's pretty cold after that. But uh, uh, but about the most time we'll miss would be maybe 10 days. After 10 days, I'm getting on a bike and going and riding somewhere. And it's not going to be terrible weather when I do that. But not everybody has that type of weather. Some of you guys are that way about skiing. Wait until these cars come on by here. Boogie down this road little bit. But I'm going to say, I don't think I need to go flying down here too much. We'll kind of cut that down some. But I'm going to say the, the first thing that I would put out there is to start out small when you're taking off. Boy, I tell you what, I'm traveling dead into the wind right now. Boy, is it loud. Hopefully all the audio comes out good. I think I got my mic in a good spot. But yeah, start small. Don't go out there and try and go 30, 40, 50 miles first time out. What would I say next? Well, I think as the real heat comes in, this is something that I've had a problem with. I'm not talking about just cycling. I'm talking about in general, get yourself hydrated. That uh, I've had some real problems with that. I've never been never been real good at doing that. Uh, but that's changed. You know, we got the Topeak bag now, and uh, I think I'm even going to end up putting a an adapter plate on my fat tire bike for it here see how that works out so I can use the same bag on both bikes but get yourself get yourself hydrated prior to going on your ride what else can we do well if you can cycle with somebody that's always a plus it kind of gives you some motivation to kind of go a little bit uh, so I'd say that's that would be a good thing that would be a good thing to have somebody to ride with keep you kind of motivated to you know push just a little bit more but somebody there to watch and make sure you don't push too much you watch each other and make sure you don't push too much what else do we got you know in a real heat and I'm not sure how I'm going to handle it this year but when we get into the real heat what I've always done is ride at about 
3.30 or 4 o'clock in the morning. And that's worked out pretty well for me. Of course, you can't film that. Oh, I guess you can. But it's not going to be a very good video. So, you know, but I'll ride three or four times before the sun ever comes up a week. Or you could ride late in the evenings. That kind of helps out with the heat some as well. Let's see. I think we'll cut up here through the through the parking lot. If you're uh, planning a relatively big ride in the summer, watch what you eat ahead of time. You know, uh, soups or liquid proteins, you know, like the gel pack type things, those would be good to have. If you're really planning on going out there for a while, those would be some good things to have. But, yeah, definitely watch what you eat ahead of time. Pastas are good for building up energy if you're going to a, like a competition type thing. But, you know, for, for leisure riding, I would just say be a little aware of what you're eating beforehand. I would, again, with a hydrate, getting hydrated, I would make sure I had water with, no, let me rephrase that. Instead of me telling you, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, I am going to make sure I have water with me from now on because I've had too much, too much issue with that. And so I might even on the real hot days throw a little bit of electrolytes in it. Uh, you know, that could be kind of a good thing to have. What else? Sunscreen. You'll, you'll notice all through the summer, and I'm in North Carolina where it gets pretty hot, but you'll notice all summer long, for the most part, I have uh, long sleeve shirts on. And I found that protects me from the sun. But it also has some other benefits. And I've done that way back, oh, pretty much most of my life. I very rarely was outside with short sleeves on. And uh, uh, because when you start to sweat, because I would really work up a sweat when I was working, uh, we'll just say. Uh, it gets on your shirt and then when any breeze comes through there it tends to really cool you off so if you're going to end up breaking a sweat actually long sleeves are a very good thing to have on at the time you know if you got as much hair as i do and you're not wearing a helmet and this this is still going to be di discovered with these helmets you know I don't know if, that, if I'm going to have a problem with sunburn because of the ventilation holes in there or not. But I guess I'll find out. What else? You know, the clothing, we was talking about the long sleeves. You know, you can, I try and make sure that I'm not wearing real, real dark clothing in the summertime. I try and wear more light colors. Uh, I've never done this myself, but you know, you can get like wicking fabrics rather than like cotton. Uh, get, get something that will wick the water away from you, the sweat. That's kind of a, uh, a good thing. Uh, I used to always, when I cowboyed for a living, I always had a wild rag. What a wild rag is, is basically a scarf that goes around you. And that was there for, oh, if you were to get yourself hurt, you've got a lot. And they're oh, probably three feet by three feet. Many a times they're silk. Uh, sometimes they're different material. But the uh, majority of mine were silk, and they would be for cleaning up if you, get, if you ended up getting yourself cut, or if your horse got a cut on them, uh, or just to wipe the sweat off of you. You could dip that in water and wrap it around your head. Uh, but a bandana would be just as good in the majority of cases, in the majority of cases.
what else you know like i said we we had just a little bit of rain here but i threw my phone in my bag here but it's charging you know i would want to make sure i had a charged up phone when i get you know get ready to go riding what i don't want to do is get overheated or something like that and not be able to get a hold of anybody what else do we got you know <laughs> charge phone before you even get to that point check your bike out if you've had your bike laid up for a couple of months three months four months depending on where you live uh, you might have had that phone tied up for quite a little while well check the spokes on it check the axles on it you know check your uh, if you've got an air fork on it check to make sure that you've got everything correct there check out the control system make sure everything works don't don't load the bike up and drive it 50 miles from home and find out there's something wrong with it you know check everything out hey, go over all the nuts and bolts make sure everything is snug that's honestly that's a good thing to do I typically will go over mine uh, about every six weeks two months something like that I'll just kind of run run some wrenches over it make sure everything is snugged up pretty well on it uh, uh, so you know you're gonna want to you're gonna want to do that what else do we got you know typically as I was thinking about this I thought you know when it got real hot when we were out uh, cowboying for a living we slowed things down we, we really tried to slow them down that was good for the horses good for the livestock good for the people I'm not so sure that's the way to go with e-biking though now if we were talking about regular cycles I'd say yeah slow it down some with e-biking you might want to actually speed it up a little bit get a little bit of air circulating around you I have found that that was really good but there's a catch to it you need to be aware of your battery because if you if you do that you might be using a lot more battery than what you're used to uh, so you don't want to get out there and all of a sudden find your find yourself with a dead battery because you've been using you know pedaling too I don't want to say ghost pedaling but not pedaling enough to really put your power in it's mostly the bike's power that's taken over and you drain your battery so you know you would want to be a little bit cautious of that something that Michelle and I do through the summers we try and find shady spots to ride we'll go a lot of time I'm not gonna say a lot of time but more than a few times we'll end up over at William B. Umstead Park that's all gravel roads gravel trails but they are also almost all shaded very well and you see a lot of people there through the heat of summer uh, that's a pretty popular place in the summer because it's shaded so well rail trails tend to be shaded pretty well as well uh, and you know a lot of the railroads thus the rail trails are following the rivers and so when you're down along a river trail you've got a little bit of the moisture from the river down in that area that's always a little bit cooler always just a little bit cooler man that was a loud truck he come up kind of almost out of nowhere for as loud as he is You know, I've often wondered about following that power line. And we're going to take a we're going to take a little ride up there. I don't see any no trespassing signs or anything like that. We'll see. If we can maybe follow this out here a little ways. Uh, but yeah, we'll go, we'll try and find shaded shady areas to ride. Um, if we're actually planning a vacation type place well we'll head north from North Carolina in the middle of the summer and of course in the middle of the winter we would tend to head more south but uh, 
What are we getting into here? Almost looks like there's a trail going back through there. Uh, I'm betting that is going to be a road to go over to the next field over. Kind of take a gander at what we're about to run into here. I'm kind of curious if I could follow that power line across to the road that we would be headed to here anyway. What else do we got? Let's get back to this. Oh, you know what? I might be able to make it quite far through here. Might be able to make it quite far through here. Oh, interesting. New one, maybe. Uh, you know, when you get home from a hot ride, especially if you're really putting a lot of exercise in on it, recharge yourself. You know, keep hydrating there and get you some decent, you know, some decent food to eat and something that's going to recharge you. But what you don't want to recharge is your battery right away. Let that thing get acclimated. Don't, don't bring in a hot battery, you know, hot from the sun and throw it straight onto the charger. Trust me, I know. <laughs> you know, what else do we got? I, I think that's going to be just about the extent of it. Let's see. That looks like a overflow right there. So we'll see about heading around this way. Uh, I think that's going to kind of wrap it up. What I miss? You know, I know I missed a few spots that you guys could fill me in on. Like I say, we're in North Carolina and it gets pretty warm here. So I'd like to hear what you guys kind of, what kind of tips you do to stay hydrated, well, to stay cool in the summer and to keep your biking going. So hey, drop that down in the comments. Hopefully everybody's doing real well. And uh, I'm gonna see if I can skirt the edge of this field. And I see one very possible bad spot to have to go across, but I'm gonna see if we can make it. So hey, till the next time internet, unless I get trapped by a Bigfoot out there, I'll see you on the next one. And this is Southern E-Bike and telling you until then, Hey, stay safe, God bless, and keep the wheels turning. Once again, we're out.